I am uh, going to be speaking to a progressive group and they sent me a, you know, just a simple contract, kind of a release, you know, yes, we'll put you on our, on our uh, platform if you'll, you know, blah, blah, blah. And in it was a forced arbitration clause. And I'm looking at this going, wait a minute, this contract is asking me to give up my rights under what I recall is the uh, Sixth Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. So, uh, uh, and by coincidence, the day after I got that, I got this email from Public Citizen saying, uh, hey, guess what? There's something going on with these forced arbitration clauses. Uh, Remington A. Gregg is on the line with us. He is the Counsel for Civil Justice and Consumer Rights at Public Citizen, an attorney. Citizen.org is the website. Uh, you can tweet him at R.A. Gregg, spelled with uh, three G's, G-R-E-G-G. -G -G. Uh, Remington, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. First of all, let's start out with what is forced arbitration? So uh, a forced arbitration clause is a, a provision in a take it or leave it contract, meaning you, you cannot, uh, you know, say, I don't want this, I don't want that. That takes away your rights um, to bring the employer um, or the company to court if you're harmed, if they cheat you, if you're the subject of discrimination, um, and it puts you instead in a privatized system, um, which is uh, headed by an arbitrator. So the sides choose an arbitrator. Um, there is no judge, no jury, um, no ability to uh, appeal. It's very, very difficult to appeal. And the, most egregiously, um, there is no requirement that the arbitrator follow the law or the fact. So it really is the wild west of the justice system. Wow. And, and how does this tilt uh, justice, for lack of a better word, tilt outcomes, let's say, um, in favor of big corporations and employers and against the individual who is signing the contract or a small company that might be signing a contract? Well, in a variety of ways. So let's just take the beginning of it. So uh, ostensibly, both sides get to choose the arbitrator. But you're going to go through this probably once in your life if you're lucky. The company goes through it a lot. So they know the, the business-friendly arbitrators. The right. arbitrators also Or at know least the lawyers for the company, right? Exactly, right. Yeah. Um, the arbitrators know that uh, the companies are repeat players. So you tend to get you know, more business-friendly arbitrators. That's one. Um, two, so this is like judge it's shopping, it's like, like uh, what's it called, jurisdiction shopping? Right, right, yeah, foreign shopping. Yeah, um, foreign You know, shopping, yeah. If, if, you, if you're in the court, you know, uh, judges don't get to choose what cases they have. They're the lottery system, and, and, the, and it's just the luck of the draw. Um, it is not like that in, in arbitration. Um, and then, of course, you're going to um, go to the arbitration. Um, as I said, there is no requirement to follow the law or the facts. And so the arbitrator gets to basically decide these things however he or she believes it should be decided. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, a lot of these provisions have uh, gag clauses, so you're not able to talk about the proceedings afterwards. So let's just think about that. There may be someone in the cubicle next to you that's having the same problem or who, who's being cheated by your, your employer out of uh, um, your cell some kind of wage, uh, your wages, um, and you're not able to talk to them about what happened or to be able to share evidence, um, which often happens not only just in the employment context, but, but in the antitrust context. When you have small businesses, you know, they may need to prove that, the, that a huge corporation is an antitrust violator, but that costs a lot of money to prove that. And there's a lot of economic analysis there, and you're not able to share that economic analysis with, um, you know, w with another party. Um, so in, in every step of the way, from, the, from before you even go into arbitration to in arbitration to after arbitration, the, the deck is really tilted against you. I, I was pretty shocked by this, and th there was also a clause of the contract that said basically, if if I ever said anything bad about the company, this this you know this this uh, um, this venue that uh, you know that, that that puts on events for progressives, that uh, you know that I was surrendering my right to do that, that I that I under this contract I was forbidden from doing that. Um, and, and, you know, and truth be told that they would not trash talk me either. But there was and there was another place in the contract where I was explicitly surrendering my right to um, uh, must not have been suing because that's what the forced arbitration does. But there was another right that I was surrendering where I explicitly said you are surrendering your right. And and yeah. I, you know, and I said to the to the CEO of the company, um, 
I don't, you know, I'm, I'm opposed to signing the, I, there's, there's no way in hell I'm ever going to get in, in court with this company, right? I mean, you know, it's like, we're both on the same side. Um, it, we're not going to have any conflict. I, it, it's just, you know, it's, it, it's not going to happen. But, but nonetheless, I, I said to the CEO, you know, uh, you're asking me to sign this thing you know, just to appear in your, on your venue in your venue. And, uh, you know, it's asking me to surrender at least two of my constitutional rights. And I, I, I you know, I'd, I'd, I'd rather not. And, and the person on the other side said, well, you know, if you don't, my lawyer will kill me. I mean, you know, I, if you ask me to take those out of the contract and I'm like, what kind of lawyer do you have? I mean, have you, did you call sharks.com? Um, or is this a, is so ubiquitous and so common that even lawyers for progressive organizations are starting to incorporate this stuff routinely? Yeah, so there, there's, a, there's a, a chock full of stuff in, it in what you said, but I'll take the, the last thing first, which is that um, it basically, because the Supreme Court over the last 30 years, in almost every case that has been presented to them, has given greater freedoms to companies to do this, it's almost malpractice not to. If you are a, a lawyer for a big company, regardless of ideology, it's basically malpractice to not put in something that has become standard and, as you said, ubiquitous. And, uh, and that's what you're seeing. You're, you're seeing people, companies react to the market. And, and specifically, a second thing that you mentioned, I, what I think what you're talking about is probably a class action ban. Yes, that's right. That's what it was. You, yeah, I would not participate yeah. in a class action lawsuit. You're right. I, thank you for because reminding that's me. That's what people... That's what people really hate. That's what big companies really hate. They hate the ability of people to band together against them. Right. Um, and this is a little tiny and, company, and, by the way, that's, that's asking yeah. me to sign this. I mean, I, I, yeah. I doubt they have 20 yeah, employees, I, you know. Oh, right. Well, but see, but that, there, there you go. This, what this is, is it's just, you know, it's a copy and paste job now. You know, you see these standards, you know, you see this stuff that's standard in contract, and you're just going to put in there because that's what, you do, right? If you see it, that's what you It's the new boilerplate, in other words. Exactly. But the problem is that in 1925, when the Federal Arbitration Act was enacted, it was specifically intended to be for merchants, company to company, for a faster way to resolve disputes. Right. They, they, was, they did not envision in any way that this would be used against consumers, it would be used against workers, it would be used with people with uh, unequal bargaining power, or that it would be used... Um, with such ubiquity. And that's right. the reason why it's so bad nowadays is because you cannot get away with it and you cannot get away from the, as you said, boilerplate, take it or leave it types of contracts. Right. Remarkable stuff. Absolutely. So, so uh, bottom line, if somebody gets a contract, whether it's, you know, a, a mortgage, you know, uh, contract from their bank or whether it's an employment contract or, uh, you know, a, a contract to <laughs> a release to speak in a theater or something, um, if there's forced arbitration in that contract, what should they do? Well, and, and also nursing home contracts, I'll have you know, which is, which is pretty shameful. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you, it's, it's, it's probably in, you know, hire a contractor to fix your home. It's probably in there, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could try to cross it out um, and, you know, and, and then sign next to it. But obviously, most companies don't allow you to pick and choose. So um, if that's the case, then you can you could try to be a, a good consumer and try to shop places that don't have it, but right. it's certainly not something you can do if you're a worker. Like you got to take the job or you don't. Um, so you have to be just really smart. Um, right. And if there is something that happens, you just got to. So you got to. So I would be. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. We're hitting the break here, but I did want to mention there's an act, a piece of law, the Fair Act, Forced Arbitration and Justice Repeal Act, that you're calling on people to support. Call your congressman. Or woman, right? Right, that's what Congress has to do something. Okay, and support the FAIR Act so that we can get rid of forced arbitration. Great. Uh, Remington Gregg, thank you.